Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English. Let's have a discussion of the first semester BCA BAC Generic English question paper March April 2023. A solved question paper under Bangalore City University BCU. So let's begin it. And here as usual the section A consists 40 marks questions from the workbook and 20 marks questions from the course book and the duration of the of the question paper is here 2 hours 30 minutes total weightage is the 60 marks so let's have a discussion of those 40 marks questions from the workbook which are very scorable one question number one you have to read the passage and you need to answer five questions based on the passage you can read the passage you can pause the video i'll skip this uh, passage here so you need to read the passage very carefully uh, read two times three times until you understand and you need to uh, you need to answer five questions based on this based on the passage so here five questions it may be one word answer one sentence answer multiple choice question fill up the blank sometimes true or false and sometimes they also ask here give a suitable title to, to the passage so i would suggest here read the passage carefully and opt select only the required answer not the whole paragraph you won't get the marks so passage or the comprehension passage has the weightage here five marks then the next question you have here uh, interpretation of the chart so sometimes pie chart bar diagram or a table or tree diagram they might give you and you need to interpret it you need to describe it in a simple way so this uh, stands here for five marks which is the weightage for five marks and you can go through the answer the following tree diagram indicates the musical instruments there are three types of musical instruments named wind which is play which is play which is played by blowing air uh, percussion which is played by percussion which is played by banging and striking stringed which is played by moving string the wind musical instrument has a special category that is woodwind which consists flute uh, clarinet and horn the other wind instruments are mouth organ and bagpipers the stringed the stringed musical instrument consists harp guitar violin cello so like this you need to give you, you do uh, i'm sorry you don't need to describe the the don't give the extra description just frame the sentences to describe the particular chart so data interpretation has a weightage for five marks i have done a special video on this topic just go through the description box about the data interpretation video now as usual i won't read the answer here because it's a very repeated question i have seen in the last two years question paper this question is very repeated one mention the types of listening it's for five marks they say mention but you should describe because it has the weightage for five marks so selective listening critical listening discriminative listening uh, information listening comprehensive listening biased listening empathetic listening so these are the uh, seven eight types of listening you need to describe it in option to this question you have very as usual very common question what's the difference between hearing and listening you can pause the video and go through the answer so what i have seen in the in those last this question paper as well as the previous question paper these two questions are very much repeated as it is i would say ditto so i hope so these questions may be repeated once again in the forthcoming examination who knows so let's hope for the best because the topic does not have many uh, does not have much detailed answer the meaning types importance uh, hearing listening that's all so, so let's move to the next part here the language functions you have here five language functions each for two marks i have done a very special video on language functions go through the description box find the link first question for two marks introduce your father to your class teacher during the meeting so here you have to very much formal introduction formal phrases like good greetings good morning sir please meet my father mr sunil sharma my father is working at infosys request your physics teacher to explain about newton's law once more in class excuse once again in the class excuse me sir yesterday i could not attend the class due to my ill health could you please explain again the newton law topic it would help me it would help me to score well in the examination third is here congratulations express your congratulations to your sister for having won coding competition hearty congrats dear sister 
we are proud of you for having won the coding competition fourth one making an, an inquiry at the railway station about the irctc travel packages hello sir could you please tell me about the irctc travel packages during april may then next question seek permission to use your friend's laptop for a project hi sunil i have given my laptop for service tomorrow i need to submit my project would you mind giving me your laptop for one day that would really help me so language functions have weightage for 10 marks very scoring one go through my special video on language functions look at the description box now instructions how to give instruction to do something so you have instruction here how to make coffee uh, that's for three marks so how to write the in instructions you generally we need to mention the main verb first main verb take beat boil pour still steaming so go through the description it's very easy then direction that's for two marks compulsory question there's no choice here so you need to go through the map and you need to use those terms go straight cross the south street then pass the sports store take a right pass the hotel cross the queen road or sometimes we use a very nice phrase follow your nose follow your nose means go straight next questions we have here remedial grammars questions so first we have here questioning skills ws questions and yes or no questions so we have three questions first one you you need to you need to frame a question to get the underlined word as an answer so we are late for the movie because of traffic so we can frame here two types of questions why are we late for the movie or sometimes why are you late for the movie then R rishi sunak is the first indian origin pm of england so in to frame yes or no question is is rishi sunak sorry is rishi sunak the first indian origin pm of england so generally yes or no question just copy the same helping verb put it in the very in the very beginning of the sentence next question again into frame ws question uh, the next flight from delhi to, sorry the next flight from bangalore to delhi is after six hours so we need to get after six hours as an answer i forgot to underline um, it's in italics as per the question paper when is the next flight from bangalore to delhi so like this you have questioning skills three marks and you have another two marks questions from the question tag very interesting one sheena won't mind if i use a book so we need to remove the full stop add here comma so won't mind that's a negative so your question tag should be positive so will she answer is here will she question mark rita acts so rudely so rita acts so rudely doesn't she why doesn't because acts it's in the acts extra act that means to say is extra s that means to say does so it should be doesn't the reason is here this is in the positive sentence so question text should be negative here here it's negative question text should be positive so question text cannot be same it's a vice versa and don't forget to mention question mark without mentioning question mark question tag and the question is incomplete you may get zero marks then <clears throat> Subject verb agreement. The industry was criticized by the Supreme Court for its actions. Industry is a singular subject, so helping verb should also be singular. No one has a greater collection of books than my friend Rishav. So no one will always carry the singular helping verb. There are few verbs, few words. No one, someone, somebody, nobody, uh, these buddy or one. They always carry the singular helping verbs somebody is waiting at the door for you is waiting then we have vocabulary the students are progressive so we need to change the word progress the word progress into adjective the students are progressive now then we need to change the word achieved into noun he has achieved a lot so people envy his achievements so this is how i have solved the questions from the 40 marks questions from the workbook now let's have a discussion the 20 marks questions from the course book you have five chapters in the first section you have here one mark questions so out of five six questions you need to opt here five questions each for one mark people think the most important elements of democracy are the holding of elections and a 
free media what is the second threat to democracy according to according to obama the second threat is here race who was found uh, i think the second uh, i'm sorry the second threat could also be the inequality please go through it might be correct please correct in my men, uh, in my description uh, box in the comment box please do mention i think the second threat should also be inequality who was found to be one against whom there was no official comment the report said that there was no official complaints against him and he was a saint how did hatur probably get its name hatur was surrounded by thick jungles and flanked by two streams one is on left side one is on right side other is on the right side and it did not have a government road they have already eaten it they have already eaten what does it indicate it in, it indicates that there exist an inequality then fifth question sixth question what does the speaker desire in the end of the poem democracy the speaker wants freedom like others that's his desire so out of these six questions you need to opt five questions now five marks questions out of three questions you need to opt to only one question number one what are the three uh, threats what are the threats according to obama according to obama the major threat is of rising economic inequality and concern that government only serves the interest of the powerful obama said our economy doesn't work as well or grow as fast when a few prosper at the expense of a growing middle class and ladders for the fox that want to get into the middle class but stark inequality is also corrosive to our democratic principles so inequality is a great threat here second major th great threat to american diplomacy is the growing tension over race and diversity in the country so second so there are two important threats are here one is the inequality first is the inequality second is the race now question number 2 for 5 marks is the modern man happy explain with reference to the poem the unknown citizen the unknown citizen is a poem that ordin wrote at a turning point in his life when he left england for the usa and left behind the idea that his poetry could make anything happen in the world the year was 1939 hitler had plunged europe into darkness and the young ordin was horrified but he had already done his bit for the cause having married erica mann the daughter of the famous writer thomas mann to help save her from the brutality of the nazis his move to america helped have uh, his move to america has helped to broaden his artistic output he started to concentrate on religion and relationships in his poetry which was very much opposed very different from the left wing politics and also ventured into writing drama and liberty The Unknown Citizen is a typical Auden's poem in that it shows the 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 poet's profound concern for the modern world and its problems. The speaker of the poem concludes that the man had lived an entirely average exemplary life. The poem is a satire on the standard on the uh, uh, standardization at the expense of individualism. Auden also dramatizes dramatizes his his theme by showing the glaring disparity between the complete statistical information over the citizen compiled by the state and the very inadequacy inadequacy of the judgments made about him the poet seems to say statistics cannot sum up an individual and physical facts are inadequate to evaluate a human happiness because man does not live by bread alone man requires here equality so the third question we have here does the poem from a german war primer discuss the futility futility of war brech poetry from a german war primer it is not just a critic of war but a scathing attack on those who profit from it brech writes the war which is coming is not the first one 
there were other wars before it when the last one came to an end there were conquerors and conquered and among the conquered the common people and the common people starved so these lines are powerful because they show how war profiteers have always been uh, around and they always profit at the expense of the poor so brech use usage of irony is also impressive in the section where he says the war which is coming is not the first one but perhaps it is the last one so these lines are very ironic because they suggest that war will always be with us and yet there's a hint of hope that maybe one day it will be the last one brech is reminding us that the war is not inevitable and that we can choose to end it so thus the poem from a german war primer discusses the futility of the war which no, which will not continue forever now we have the questions for the 10 marks questions you need to opt one question out of uh, three questions so friends i have done the videos on all those five chapters of the course book you can see the uh, the links of those chapters videos in the description box or you can also go through the playlist from my youtube channel and the first bcu bcu first semester bsc bca you can see all the chapters videos links question number 1 for 10 marks does the poem from a german war primer end on a positive note so i have tried to give a summary a very summative answer which can fit to any other questions also bertolt brecht's poetry from a german war primer is a masterpiece of anti war literature that captures the horrors and the absurdities of war in a powerful and poignant way written during world war 2 The poem is a scathing critic of the Nazi regime and its propaganda machine which sought to glorify war and dehumanize the enemy. In this analysis we will explore the theme structure and language of the poem and examine how Bertolt Brecht uses his poetry to expose the true nature of war. The poem is structured as a series of short sharp verses each one a snapshot of the particular aspects of war the lines are grounded into four sections each one focusing on a different stage of the war preparation attack defense and aftermath the brevity of the verses and the starkness of their imagery give the poem a sense of urgency and immediacy as if the reader is witnessing the events of the war first hand The first section of the poem preparation which sets the stage for the horrors to come Bertolt Brecht describes the propaganda machine that prepares the soldiers for war using slogans and lies to convince them that they are fighting for a noble cause so he says general your bombers flight is delayed the enemy has been informed of your coming and has moved to a safer place your target still standing this verse exposes the absurdity of war where the enemy is constantly one step ahead and the destruction wrought by the bombers is ultimately futile the use of the second person your bombers flight implicates the reader in the war machine forcing them to confront the complicity in the violence the second section that is attack is the most brutal and visceral part of the poem brash depicts the violence and the chaos of war in a vivid detail showing the human cost of the conflict he says trained on the enemy's heart the gunner pulls the trigger the enemy falls in the gunner's heart beats faster this verse captures the dehumanization of the enemy reducing them to a target to be eliminated the gunner's heart beating faster suggests a sense of excitement or thrill at the act of killing highlighting the psychological toll of war on the soldier the third section is defense which focuses on the suffering of the civilians caught in the crossfire but Bur- brech shows the devastation wrought by the war 
on innocent people who are often the ones who suffer the most. He says, the houses are, are burning, the children are dead, just another, another day in the war. This verse is particularly powerful in its simplicity, highlighting the senseless destruction of war and the callousness, and the callousness of those who, who perpetrate it. The use of the phrase, just another day in the war, suggests that this kind of violence has become routine and normalized, normalized a fact that should shock and horrify the reader. The final section, Aftermath, is a sobering reflection on the true cost of the war. Bretsch shows the physical and emotional scars that soldiers carry with them long after the conflict has ended. He writes, the wounded are lying in the hospital, their eyes are closed, they dream of the war and of the peace that follows. This verse captures the trauma and the psychological damage that the war inflicts on those who participate in it. The fact that the wounded soldiers dream of both war and peace, which suggests a deep ambivalence about the conflict and a sense that the violence has left them with conflicting emotions and desires. So throughout the poem, Brech uses the language in a very powerful and, and evocative way to convey the horrors of war. He employs the vivid imagery, stark contrast, unexpected juxtapositions to create a sense of uh, disorientation and unease. So Brech also has used here repetition and variation to bring out the great effect. So in conclude, to conclude, we can say poetry from a German war primer is very powerful and poignant anti-war poem that captures the horrors and the absurdities of the war in a way that is both uh, visceral and thought-provoking. So Birch, Battle Brech's usage of language and structure creates a sense of urgency and immediacy, forcing us to read, to confront the true nature of war and its devastating impact on human lives the poem is a testament to the power of poetry to expose the truth and challenge the status quo and it remains a timeless masterpiece of anti-war literature. So that's about 10 marks. Next question. Comment on Ramesh's imaginary world. Here also I have tried to give a summative answer. The story The Golden Dream is a translation of Suvarna Sopna. So from from Pakka Kranti and has been translated from Kannada by Bageshri. The story Golden Dream depicts the innocence, wonder, imagination, and curiosity of childhood and strange, wonderful ways of nature. According to the people of Hathur village, Ramesh didn't have father. His mother had brought him up all by herself. She had some four or six acres of land in Hathur. People of Hathur are somewhat detached a lot. Since Hathur was, detached means not connected, since Hathur was surrounded by thick jungle and flanked by two streams, one is on the right side, other on the left side. It didn't have a government road. Though people had lived there for generations, the village had not even been marked on the government map. People of the village paid no tax. The government would not sanction even a paltry coin to the village in its budget. No one went to the village even to ask for the votes. No politics was po po possible in that village of just three or four houses. There were thick jungles for miles on both the sides of this highway. But for a few vehicles that occasionally piled on the road, not a single soul could be seen on that road. Ramesha had to wait there for his bus every day to reach his school, which was far away. It was a strange bus stop. People with weak hearts would never dare alone in the silent. The clouds that came floating from the direction of the sea first encountered the peaks of the hills around the Hathur. They dashed against them, reeled round and round and sank down to the valley of Hathur. So it was always cloudy and foggy along the highway. Buses and cars that travelled through the thick fog had to inch ahead, stumbling and groping with headlights on even in the daytime. In fact, people say many crimes have indeed taken place on this road. Smugglers from the coast 
from the coastal region local smugglers who carry sandalwood to kerala and such others use this road there is a river flowing down the valley some distance to the left of the road anyone who tries to catch them can be finished off and thrown into the river it is even also said that the murderers who found it a suitable place to dispose of the bodies brought them there in the cars and threw them down the steep cliff the mountain recently the military people had searched the valley for a helicopter which had suddenly disappeared after taking off from bangalore it is also said that they had found several bones and skeleton at the bottom of the cliff once when ramesh was waiting for the bus he heard someone talking behind him he turned back and he saw a strange looking people with red mustaches and hair wearing wearing turbans coming down the hatur road they had with them donkeys carrying loads on their backs those hindi speaking people must have been wandering wandering tribal they sat near the rock on the other side of the road and talked for some time later they got up one by one took the loads and left for very reluctantly with the donkeys people who came down the hill in group were now walking dispersed even inch inch a furlong from the other he started the huge he started the at uh, the huge boulder on the other side of the road in silence when the fog cleared a bit he could see that a couple of dogs and a few people were still around ramesha was not scared as if it was a natural for anybody from hatur people with weak hearts were never born there if they did they didn't survive a woman <clears throat> who was standing near the rock came straight towards ramesha why was she still there when all the people had left and wand and wondered he wondered maybe she had gone to the river to relieve herself he thought she started she sorry she stared at him for a long time and asked him a lot of nonsensical questions in an unintelligible unintelligible hindi language ramesha only blinked at her whatever got into her seeing ramesha standing alone in that lonely place she started telling him through gestures that she would remove wax from his ears ramesha refused impatiently sorry there's a tech, there's a spelling error refused impatiently from his moving head then despite all his protest she insisted on telling his fortune took his hand and told him a lot of things in a language ramesha could not understand anything she took out an oil bo- an oil bottle from a bag and said she would massage her his head ramesha who did not have any money with him except the bus charge showed his empty pocket to her but she poured the oil which had a strange fragrance on his head and started massaging she touched him all over her oh, sorry sorry she touched him all over under the pretext of massaging when she rubbed hard shaking him up he wondered if it was all a dream or a reality completely at a loss as to how she how he could he should face the situation amid the smell of oil and the rubbing of his head he wondered what he should do just then he heard the bus approaching ramesha waved at the bus and it stopped some distance away he ran and got into it the strange woman stood there with her two mongrels a bag slung across her shoulder this incident did not have any special signific- significance on in ramesh's life it was not the cause of his strange behavior either as the fragrance of the oil slowly evaporated into the air leaving no trace the incident too was forgotten contrary to the suspicion of the people of hatur ramesh's strange behavior was not the result of a spell cast by some girl in his class either then was the magical ambience of the bus stand the reason why was he behaving differently one day ramesha who was quite bored of waiting in the shade of the huge tree wondering if the bus would stop at all started staring at the bo- at the boulder on the other side of the road 
he suddenly asked himself why it couldn't be the back of an elephant the moment he stared the at the rock and he made his imagination to work out there's a hidden faculty of his mind gradually came alive once he learned the method of minstrelsy he thought elephant and it really became an elephant once he learned the method of rejecting the cause and effect relationship of the physical world the boulder opposite slowly started breathing and he could see it heaving in the fog enveloped magical world the trees started dancing to the tune of ramesha's imagination as if they were made of rubber like a ringmaster he conducted the dancing the bus did not come it was a sound of an ambassador car sometimes people from the valley got tired of waiting for the bus and they took they took tax they took taxi if the other people waved they would stop and take them along though it was it cost 10 paisa more than the bus fare but it was better than waiting for the bus but when ramesha signaled for the taxi to stop it sped away the taxi had dark window panes and he could not even see if there were people inside as the car turned at the bend ramesha who had heard that smugglers always had the car windows painted black color though its dicky must be full of gold biscuits so it was becoming difficulty ramesha to catch his bus some strange beggar woman rubbing his head had turned out quite like aladdin rubbing the magical lamp ramesha tried to forget his newly mastered art however much he tried as soon as he reached the bus stand the magic world of his mind drew him again to the dream world and he started at the boulder opposite he felt pulled to it like a drunkard to a bar couldn't the damn bus come immediately it never came while he rolled in his jam studded dreams it came and went off in a flash even the bus was a dream one dream did not have the patience to wait for the other dream to end ramesh tried waiting in a different bus stop but none of the buses stopped there if things had gone on like this he perhaps would have gone mad once when he stood in the bus stop the boulder opposite clapped surprised ramesha went near it listened intently wondering which cursed which cursed woman would emerge out of it and he heard the claps again from inside the boulder as he watched the boulder that it was the boulder which looked like the back of an elephant cracked on the top of the boulder right at the start of the crack there was a banyan plant who knows which birds dropping had planted the banyan seed there by some magic it had sunk its roots into the rock and had even sprouted a few leaves the boulder which couldn't be shaken even by the explosives had suddenly cracked under the pressure of roots as thin as hair its leaves which played in the wind looked at ramesha and rolled with laughter it would be crazy to connect this incident to ramesha getting all it right again but after this ramesha missed his bus less often hence this story brings a difference between dream and reality both have their own taste explain the democracy and free speech how they are connected to each other the article when free speech is truly free is written by sundar sarukai it's taken from the newspaper the hindu dated 22nd march 2019 it discusses a very important constituent of democracy namely freedom of speech its roles is its responsibilities and its manifestations we often tend to think that among the main elements of democracy are the holding of elections and our free media both elections and free media are important because they stand among the other things for the notions of free speech and free expression casting a vote anonymously of one's own free will is an example of free expression and it's more broader than the free speech free speech really 
but is is the free speech the essence of democracy is it really so important for an effective democracy paradoxically there's an inherent tension between the free speech and, and democracy if free speech is understood merely as the freedom to say what one wants then that is obviously not conducive to meaningful social behavior for example one can spread falsehood about another in the name of free speech one can insult lie create harm hatred through the free speech rumor gossip fake news deliberate lying can be hidden under the guise of a free speech it is speech which which an ulterior motive to call to call these as a free speech is a mistake so what is really a free speech means the freedom to say that what one wants we can't really say what we want all the time since all speech is constrained we are constrained by language words concepts grammar and even by the physical contours of our mouth we are constrained by the biological and cognitive structures related to thoughts and its expression through language in addition to constraints all speech also has a cost thus the essence of free speech is not really about the freedom to say what we want it's more than about the speech which is free which comes without any cost free speech is actually speech for which you don't pay a price but paying a price is not in the hands of the speaker free speech is nothing but the conditions under which the hearer is not allowed to take offense and intimidate the speaker the so the real freedom in free speech lies not in the freedom of the speaker to say what she wants but in the constraints on the hearers to allow the speaker to say what she wants thus when we demand the right to free speech we are essentially demanding the right to stop others from not letting us speak very confusing really the most important consequence of the idea of free speech is that it shifts the responsibility of free speech from the speaker to the hearer so dear friends this is how i have tried to solve the question paper of 2023 of first semester bsc bc under bangalore city university and i have also solved the other question papers please go through those question papers links in the description box all the chapters links in the description box or you can also go through the playlist on my channel bcu first semester bca bsc So I wish you good luck for the forthcoming examination thank you so much